Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about how to test for thyroid conversion issues. Now if you are new to the world of thyroid management, thyroid conversion is a very important process that every single thyroid patient should understand. You don't have to understand it as in depth as perhaps we're going to be talking about it today, but you do need to understand why it's so important for your body. And to do that, I want to show you um, the whiteboard. We'll talk about what it's doing because this will help you really grasp the concept of why it's so important and what it really is. So let's get this out here. So here I have a picture of the thyroid gland, which is up here. Okay. So this thyroid gland, it's kind of what it looks like. It's got a little bit of a uh, uh, texture to it. Um, now this is in your neck. And what I want to show here is that the majority of the thyroid hormone being produced is 80% T4, which is symbolized right here. That's why this has a big arrow and about 20% T3. Now, when it comes to the difference in thyroid hormones, T3 is much more powerful than T4. And I'll be talking about that in just a second here. But what you need to understand is the majority of the thyroid hormone your body produces, your thyroid gland produces, is in the T4 form. Now, okay, what does that mean? Well, that's okay. The problem is, since T3 is so much more powerful, your body kind of uses T4 as a reservoir, a holding, if you will, like a holding tank, in order to turn it into T3 as it needs to. Now your body sort of has a, a, a way to do that, and that's called the thyroid conversion process, which is what we're talking about today. So it has the option of taking T4 as needed and turning it into T3 down here. So you are getting some T3 directly from the thyroid gland, but the majority of it comes directly from this conversion process. Now this conversion process occurs in the liver, it occurs in um, the gut, it occurs in your cells, it's occurring all over your body, the majority in the liver. Um, but it does occur elsewhere as well. Here's one of the big problems though. When, during this conversion process, your body has two choices. It can either turn the T4 into the T3, which you want, right? That's a good thing. Or it can take that T4 and turn it into reverse T3. Now reverse T3 is anta antagonistic to T3. So you can really think about these, thing as, these things as competing against one another. The more T3 you have, the better you will feel. The more reverse T3 you have, the more you will see blockage of T3 and the worse you will feel, at least from the perspective of a thyroid patient. So really what you wanna do as a thyroid patient is encourage the conversion of T4 to T3, that's why it's called thyroid conversion, and sort of discourage the conversion of T4 to reverse T3. Okay, so that's what this conceptually, look, conceptually looks like, and that's why we really care about this conversion process, because it accounts for the majority of T3 in the body, and that's really what makes you feel better. So the question is, how can you test for, or how do you know if you are somebody who is not converting very well? And we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk about which tests you need to actually test for that. We'll be talking about some of the patterns that, that um, show that you're not converting very well in just a second here. But what I wanna start with are a little bit of, are some facts about the thyroid that you should know as a thyroid patient. So fact number one, T3 thyroid hormone, as I mentioned previously, is by far the single most important and most powerful thyroid hormone in your body. Now this is strange because you'll see most doctors don't even test for it, but it is absolutely the strongest. When you look at how strong it, how strong it is compared to T4, you will see that it is sometimes hundreds of times more powerful than T4. It depends on what study you're looking at and a bunch of other factors, but just know that it's way, way, way stronger and way more powerful than T4. That's fact number one. Fact number two, most thyroid hormone produced by your body is not T3, but is produced as T4. We just mentioned that in the drawing that we just talked about. Fact number three, only 20% of T3 in your body is directly produced by the thyroid gland. Again, that means the majority of the T3 that your body gets comes from the conversion process. That's why it's so important. That's why you need to understand this information. Fact number four, roughly 80% of T3 is created through peripheral conversion in various tissues in your body. We talked about that, remember. Most of this conversion happens in the liver, some happens in the gut, some happens in your cells, and so on. Fact number five, doctors know that this conversion process exists, they're taught about it in school, um, and they know that it is important, but they pay no attention to it and they assume that it occurs 100% uh, as normally in every single person. That's the big problem here. There's a lot of assumptions being made about what happens in each individual person. And I can tell you from experience that not every single thyroid patient is converting the same. If we took just, there will be thousands of people who, will, who watch or listen to this, and every single one of you will convert at a different rate. And yet that is never taken into account by your doctor when they're judging how much thyroid medication should we give you or what type of dose should we give you. And the reason is because it's kind of hard to test for, which is why we're talking about what we're talking about today. Fact number six, there are several known issues that slow down or inhibit this process, including genetic factors that are outside of your control. So again, this just kind of highlights the idea that some of you will have a harder time converting 
you know, based off of things that are completely outside of your control, such as your genetics. And that has to do with deionase enzymes and so on. We won't get into that very heavily right now, but just know that there are enzymes that, do, that are involved in this conversion process. And just because of genetics, some people's enzymes work better than other people. So if we could give some people T4 and they have no problem converting it all to T3, we give the same, a different person the same dose of T4 medication and their body's like, we don't know what to do with this. We don't produce T3 with it, right? That's a problem because no two people can be treated the exact same when you look at all these facts in context. Okay, so now that we have the facts out of the way, let's talk about the lab test. So I have two sets of lab tests that you need to get. First would be the required lab test that I think everyone should get if you want to test for this. And the second would be optional, or optional but highly recommended. And I'll talk about these in just a second. So the required list includes free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. Now again, if we go back to this image, it makes a lot of sense, right? You gotta get the free T4 level, you gotta get the free T3 level, and you gotta get the reverse T3 level. These are non-negotiable. You have to get these because you gotta know what's happening. Is your body taking T4 turning into T3, or is it taking T4 and turning into reverse T3? These you have to get. Now, the, some optional tests include, but highly recommended, include sex hormone binding globulin, sometimes referred to as SHBG, total T3 level, which is a combination of free T3 and bound T3, so it kind of comes puts them all together, and the TSH. So yes, the TSH is not really important uh, per se compared to these other lab tests, but it is a good idea to get because it has value outside of its um, outside of the information it tells you about thyroid conversion. So it still is a good thing to get, and I would recommend getting it. SHBG and TOL T3, I have videos which explain their importance um, and why they're so, uh, why, I why I would recommend them, but I won't go into a huge detail today talking about what they do or um, why they're so important for conversion. Um, but what I do want to do is talk about the patterns that indicate you have an issue with thyroid conversion. So let's say that you are someone listening to this, you have your labs out, now let's look at the labs and let's determine what the results are telling you. Do they tell you you have a conversion problem? How do you know if you have a conversion problem? So I have four patterns here that can all indicate that thyroid conversion is a problem. Now the first one would be high free T4 and low free T3. Now remember, when I'm talking about these um, lab tests and these values and these ranges, I'm talking about relative to one another. So it doesn't have to be high, doesn't mean it has to be outside of the, the lab range. So if the lab range is, let's, I'm just making this up, let's say it's one to two. If your T4 is 1.8 and your free T3 is 1.1, that's a pretty big spread between these two things. If they were both 1.5 and 1.5, okay, well that means they're roughly the same, right? So that's not a big issue. So don't think that when I say high, it means that they have to be outside of the reference range that the lab test gives you. They don't have to be flagged as high, they don't have to be flagged as low, but they have to be high or low relative to one another. And the gap between them is what's really important. So there is some nuance in the interpretation here. So high free T4 and, high, and low free T3. Let's just talk about this, because this will make a lot of sense. We'll bring this back up here. So if you have a high level of T4, and a low level of T3, well, that means that it's probably going this way instead of that way, right? That's, that's pretty obvious. That one's one of the more obvious options. Now, so people who have conversion issues who have that problem, they know they, they, know they usually have it. Number two would be low free T4 and low free T3. So let's take an example of somebody who has a low level of free T4 here, and they have a low level of free T3. So let's say in the example I used before, let's say their free T4 was 1.1 and their free T3 is 1.1 as well. As well. So that can still be a conversion issue, even if you don't know what the reverse T3 is, because the levels are so low. It's hard to actually see an elevated reverse T3 when everything is so low. So if your thyroid is not able to produce enough thyroid hormone across the board, then you, can't, you really can't manifest the conversion problem until you increase your thyroid hormone production. So sometimes what you'll see are these people who are formally diagnosed with, low, with hypothyroidism before they're given thyroid medication, and they have a low free T4 and a low free T3 level, and it's not until you give them the thyroid medication, such as level thyroxin, that then that conversion issue gets manifested. So low free T4, low free T3 can still indicate and often does indicate conversion problems. Number three, another obvious one, and that is high reverse T3. So take away your free T4 and your free T3 for a minute. If you have high reverse T3, then that is almost always a problem. The one exception is, and I don't want to get into this too much, but sometimes if you're taking too much of an isolated dose of T3 medication, such as Cytomel, you're taking a really high dose of that, you can see high reverse T3, which is sort of like your body trying to protect yourself from excessively high doses. So yes, that can happen. It's pretty unusual, it's pretty rare, unless you're being treated by a doctor who hopefully knows what they're doing if they're giving you that type of medicine. But if your T reverse T3 is elevated for any reason, that's a sign of a conversion issue because if we go back to that image I showed you, reverse T3 should always be you know, mid to low. It should never be high. Under pretty much any circumstance, it should never be high. And it often is high if you are sick or have inflammation or have other problems inside of your body. Number four would be low to normal TSH with symptoms of hypothyroidism. 
So let's imagine now that you have a low TSH, and but you're still experiencing the symptoms of hypothyroidism. That is still a problem because here's what can happen. If your body is not able to produce enough thyroid hormone, or if you have pituitary problems, so normally we think of high TSH as being associated with hypothyroidism, right? Because if your body senses low thyroid hormone, it tells your pituitary gland, and your pituitary starts kicking out TSH to go talk to the thyroid gland. But in low cases of TSH, you can sometimes be diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. But if you have low TSH with hypo, meaning low thyroid symptoms, that can sometimes be indicative of a pituitary problem, in which case you're not getting enough thyroid hormone out, so you can still experience conversion issues in that setting. Now, this one's a little more tricky, and it can get missed by a lot of patients and doctors as well, but that's another pattern that can be associated with um, thyroid conversion issues that you should be aware of. Now, if you are, um, I have other videos, by the way, so we won't talk about the, the treatment necessarily right now. This is more just about assessing whether or not you have this problem. Now, if you do have this problem, the key is to increase that T3 and decrease that reverse T3. And I have tons of information, videos, you know, natural treatments, medications that can do this. There's lots of different ways to do this and to improve these levels. I just want to bring this to your attention that this is very important and does account for a lot of the patients who are listening to this who are feeling poorly uh, but don't know why. Maybe they've been told their thyroid lab tests are great or you know, normal or uh, you know, whatever they are, but they really aren't. And when you start looking into these conversion issues, when you start ordering free T3, reverse T3, SHBG, and so on, these sort of problems, they become more obvious, they become more apparent. So if you have any questions about how to test for thyroid conversion, you know, maybe if you're confused about what this information means, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer those. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of thyroid info, tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. That's pretty much all I do all the time every day um, and have for the last six or seven years or so. So uh, you know, I have pretty good experience in doing that. So that's all I have for you guys today and otherwise I will see you in the next one.